We're here. We're late. I think I think we're working. It, it, everything says that we're working, and I don't. I'm not seeing anything. Yeah. Okay. Can you see me on the uh, on the other side? I can. I can stream. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Excellent. You, you have a green background, but you you're, you're not, not doing, doing anything funny, funny with it. No, I'm not doing anything funny with my green background right now. But that's that's fine. Um, I I needed to start somewhere. Um, it was better than looking at the giant mess behind me. Um, and like I can I can push the button and I can make the green background disappear. Like, uh, well, at least I thought I, I had a thing in here to make the green background disappear, and now it has gone away. But if I press this and do the thing, then it might. I don't, yeah, it doesn't matter. Whatever. Um, we're here. That's all that matters. Hi. Um, this is Sahaj. This is Sahaj. I'm Carl. Um, we're gonna do? we're gonna build some stuff today. Um, I'm hoping that we can be heard. Yeah. I'm looking to see yeah. if there's. The chat panel is being weird for me. I'm trying to figure out how to uh, make it less weird. Oh, here we go. If I close that out, that says I'm in the chat room. Is there anybody in the chat room? Doesn't look like it. Cool. Okay. Well, you know, that's something. It says there's somebody here. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we, we, I, that I, that would be me. Um, that's you. All right. That's fine. It's okay. We, we might, we might want, want to, to uh, uh, push, push a bunch, a bunch on it right now. Ah, yes. Um, it's all good. I am fairly certain that I did all the things. Oh, I should actually look at my phone and see if I got the notification that we were going live. I actually follow our own channel. It's amazing. Hey, look, that worked. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, all right, it's fine. Whatever. We can get started. So, um, let me move this, and then I can switch to the overhead view, and you can see some of the shenanigans. So what we're doing today is we're building, uh, we're building this. This is the, the High Five Unmatched. It is a uh, Risk Five computer made by Sci Five. It is the follow-up to the, uh, the High Five uh, Unleashed, which came out um, a while ago. Um, one thing that would probably be worth noting is... All right, yes, my audio is coming out where I want it to. Okay, good, good, good. This is exciting. All right. Um, so, let me show you what, we've, what I've got. And we'll go through it and why, and we can answer questions if they come up. I'm hoping they do. Maybe they won't. It doesn't really matter. Um, as soon as I find the right button. There's the right button. That's that's good. Okay, and now the audio is turned back on, so we can actually all hear each other again. Um, yes, I much improved things happened overnight. Okay, so motherboard that we just talked about. Um, we've got uh, Samsung 970 Pro NVMe card that's going to be the primary storage. We have a Noctua fan that may or may not be used. We'll figure that out later. This is a Radeon 6000 graphics card. Um, that I specifically chose because uh, the drivers are open source for it. Um, but uh, it does not require the AMD GPU stuff. So newer cards are AMD GPU based. They would work in this, but they don't necessarily work for the bootloaders right now. We'll figure out how that all plays together later. These are right angle adapters for the card, which will make sense in a moment. Um, Intel Wi-Fi 6 adapter with fancy antenna and backplate and the whole nine yards that arrived yesterday. So I'm hoping it shows up because they didn't actually seal the little uh, anti-static uh, envelopes that the card came in and they were in the box shuffling around loose all the way from China. I'm sure it's fine. Um, this is an external... Let me take it out of the, the thing so, you can all, so we can all see it. Um, this is an external... USB-A to internal uh, USB header, which is going to be used for plugging in this fan controller um, and these fans. Um, this is the power supply. And all of this is going into this thermal take case, um, <laughs> which should be entertaining. So um, is, go ahead. Is, is that the 
modular 550 watt power supply? Yes! Yeah, yeah, it's the it's the Cooler Master. Huh, I thought they only came in like higher rating. They did, I I didn't... For, for, for the modular ones. Yeah, yeah, they, they do. Um, I specifically went with the lowest one I could get because I think the power requirements for this is something like 250. If, if that, like... Mm -hmm. This is really power efficient. This is this takes nothing. Uh, the NVMe drive is nothing. So like it's going to be really low power. Honestly, the things that are probably going to take the most power are blinking lights on the fans while the fans are spinning at full speed. <laughs> um, but that's fine. So um, so that's that's what we're the the game plan is basically get this built. Um, I believe, so actually here you can, you can actually see it, so it comes with this lovely card that tells you to go to the Get Starting Guide, which I have read ahead of time. Um, some of this stuff has been opened, not all of it has been opened. It comes with an SD card with an operating system on it, but as you and I both know, Sahaj, it comes with a, it comes with a BSP operating system, which means it's going to be kind of crap, and that's fine. Um, for today, oh, it comes with a backplate! That's awesome. Um, for today's uh, work, that'll be. Oh, it even has holes for the Wi-Fi antenna. I didn't even. That's. Yeah, that's oh, that's 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 a nice touch. That's a that's, that's a, nice a sign touch, of quality that from. I am all for. Because I specifically went and bought this Wi-Fi card because yeah. it came with the the bracket adapter. So, uh, mwah, magnifique. Um, whoever I need to kiss at Sci Five, just let me know. Um, all right. So let me try and get some of this stuff out of the way. <laughs> Um, so like for, for most people, it might not make sense because x86 motherboards have come with that for a while. Right, right, yeah. We know how We're, important that is. Yeah, so Sahaj and I are typically wind up... I mean, we, we both build x86 computers, but how we met each other is by doing stuff in the ARM community. And in the ARM community, this stuff is unheard of. Like, nobody's, nobody's thought about putting Wi-Fi adapters in. That's crazy talk. Um, but that's fine. So we'll get all that figured out. All right, let me crack open this box and get this beast up on the table after I make a little more room. Get these guys out of the way. Uh, that should be good for now. Um, so the way this case works is, as I'm sure you saw, the board mounts uh, internally and it kind of like all the IOs up on the top, which is why I got these right angle adapters because uh, the idea is HDMI, I want it to come out the back, and I'm just going to have a cable that lives in the in the case. Um, so we'll see how well that works here in a minute. Awesome. The bag came out, but not the case. Love it when that happens. Um, hang on. I'm going to need to, like, stand up. <laughs> So much static electricity. Um, hashtag not sponsored, but yes, I am building this on a um, Gamers Nexus mod mat. This is actually the original Gamers Nexus mod mat. They don't look like this anymore. They're all black now. Uh, I have a smaller one that is the correct color, but um, this is this is the first gen, and it's old, and I love it, and it is actually pro properly tied in, and everything's grounded, and all that jazz. So this ought to be great. All right. Um, next question. How do I get into this? I guess I should consult the manual. Ooh, look at all the accessories. Uh, can you see those accessories? Sort of? I'll do a better job of this here in a second. Wow. What are these giant white things? I don't know. We'll find out. Hello, manual. So, what can we talk about while I'm... Instead of just me muttering while we're uh, while I'm trying to get stuff into this uh, into this chassis. Um, so I've been building. Um, I've been building these wall art pieces. All oh, right. This. Want um, me to, uh, from flip, all flip the over to you? yeah, all the dead old hardware. Yeah, let me let me build a scene here. Give me yeah, a maybe a for a second. Um, hang on. I should be able to do this, and then I didn't. I didn't think to have this ahead of time. Uh, 
overhead with Zahaj. Uh huh? And then I want to add. Did it switch? Zahaj, give me a second. Add existing. Add that one. Hang on, it hasn't switched yet. I'm, 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 I'm looping you in. Uh, I'm gonna put you over there in that corner, and then, boom. Okay. And if you want, I can reverse it so that uh, you're you're big and I'm small, but whichever. Uh huh. Uh, actually, let's let me do that. Uh, uh no, no, it's, it's fine. fine. Okay. Yeah, I can still show off stuff like that. Yeah, unfortunately, hey, the uh, it's bad. It. It's bad. It. The video stuff between you and me is not great at the moment. It was much better yesterday. I don't know what happened. It's almost like it's the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 that's how it, how it uh, uh, like, like, it's, 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 it's a zoomed in, in view, view right. but that's, that's how it looks. looks. The little, the little display, display where you, where you see the goldfish gold swimming, swimming is uh, an LCD, LCD with, with this backlight, backlight and uh, all, all the Light, light filter, filter moved. Um, it, it has, has a clock, clock which is not, not visible right, right now, so the yeah, idea is which is to um, not, not have this tiny LCD, LCD but, but do like, 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 like a full, full low own um, frame, frame with, with that LCD, LCD and, and like, like with actual hardware, hardware showing at the back, so it needs to be super, super bright. Super bright. Um, um, but so that's but one, so that's those, one are those are two old, old Radeon, Radeon GPUs, GPUs, one of them is one of them is deleted, the other one deleted, has, the other one has weird issues that weird I was never able to solve, so that's dead as well now, that's dead as well now. <laughs> and so showing you of so moving back in I can show the one ones that have been working on more. One of us of is going all robotic and I don't know why. I think it might be you. I'm looking at my system stats and everything looks okay. Oh wait, no. Frame rate's dropping. It's back now. Well, keep talking. Let's see what happens. Oops. Yeah, yeah so, so this, this is just like a router in, in a frame. It's a broken router, but um, <laughs> with, with the lights, the lights on, on and everything, everything looks pretty good. Pretty good. Cool. Um, um, the the other one, other one is, is... This case is weird. The other one is three Raspberry Pis. My first one, my second one that I burned, and the last one is a Pi three that sort of died folding COVID stuff that I'm holding at home. Ah. Um, also, it has its um, its CPU cover removed. Um, oh yeah, you posted that one on Twitter the other day. That was pretty cool. Did you see, see this? Kind of, yeah. It was pretty easy because I like like I saw a video of someone doing it, mm -hmm. and I was like, that looks extremely hard because he was heating it and everything. It turned out like you can just pop it off. Oh, nice. It's it's not sealed with anything. It's, it's just sealed, sealed with the, the same thermal, thermal compound that they use, so it's just sticking with that. Oh, okay. So so easy to clean up. Clean up. Sides off of this thing, but the back comes off with thumb screws. This case is fascinating. It's all over. It's all over. It is. Um, um, and the third, and one, third one that I've built is, is, is um, my um, HB my HBA that, that almost gave, that gave, me, a gave me a heart attack earlier, 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 earlier this year. So that's so that HB goes HB in there as well. As well. Um, so, so yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and the plan is to go over the band wall of the and um, hopefully it'll look good right now because of the whole it's, it's like, like a bright spot um it doesn't so we'll see what the exact brightness is but uh yeah so it turns out that the uh the screws on the back of this are captive um and i had been taking them out completely oops but it's fine i fixed it okay <laughs> um awesome yeah. Okay. Martin, Martin is watching. He can't see the chat. chat. He can't see the chat. Okay. 
Interesting. Oh yeah, I don't I don't have a chat on the the stream. Um. So, depending on how you're. No, no, but there's a chat on Twitch. Oh. Oh. Do we not? Do we not? Do we not have chat enabled in the channel? Uh oh. Are we is, not? Cool is, is that is that a thing? <laughs> I don't know. Hang on. Let me look. No, I would. No, I would think we have. Uh. Show moderation actions chat appearance. That seems uh, yeah, yeah, I can, I can, I can see, see chat. chat. I, can I can even say hi. Yeah, I, so you, you, you are logged in, you are logged in as us, right? No, 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 no. no. I'm, I'm using another using browser. Another just browser. Check, there, is check, there is a way to do it. Uh, okay. I, I can just see chat. I, I can just see chat. I opened the stream and I saw the chat. Uh, uh. I have a thing that says hi all from us, but I don't know how that happened. Yes, I yes, just I just that. send that okay. to test, to test if it's working. working. And then oh, oh call. Uh, uh, we, we have, have an, an issue, issue with, with my audio, audio being, being doubled. Uh oh, me fix. One moment. That's good to know. I think all I need to do is. Are you better now? Uh, I don't know. I'll have, have to. I'll have to see. Have to see. No, no, it's still echo. It's still echo. Still echo. Okay, hang on. I'm, I'm working on it. Actually, if I just do that, that'll probably no, that won't fix it. That makes you go away completely. Ah. Wow, my stream. Wow, my stream. Nope, that's me. Not okay, I think I fixed it now. Sorry. Yeah. Check, check, check. Well, I'm glad you're in chat because the chat yep, that I'm what... looking at in the browser makes no sense. Or <laughs> in OBS makes no sense. So I'm just going to let you... Uh, uh, I'll let you manage chat and talk to them and do all those wonderful things because I don't know what's wrong. More testing required for not now. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, you're no longer you're no longer echoey. My, I'm no longer echoey, but also so this thing happens with Linux on the the. Yeah. Radio on the AMD GPU driver, um, specifically on my install, and it's not something that's happened uh, with um, with like even after formatting everything. Huh. Um, so it's a driver issue with Fedora. What happens is that a particular window would get like super stuttery. If you uh, click and drag and move the window, it will work fine. But as soon as it's sitting there, it starts to get super stuttery and you can't you know, use it. That's very weird. And uh, White fan comes with black mounting screws. And that happened. <laughs> a, a bit of contrast is fine. I guess. I don't mind that. I, d I, don't, I don't have a choice. Um... <laughs> The fan that's already in this case has black mounting screws, but it's a black fan. Um, and the reason I got the white fan is because I wanted uh, it to be as reflective as possible, so that the because uh, um, I'm going to try and illuminate it with the fan is my is my goal. See how that goes. Can you? If I, if I change my camera see? right now, do you have to reconfigure it? I don't know. Um, if you change it, if if you change it, but it's through OBS, no. If I but if you do, and I have to reconfigure it, that's fine. I know how to do it. No, no, no. We no, no, figured no. that out. Because I'm, I'm wondering if, if my camera issue, because right now it's looking like crap. If my camera issue is a problem with me going through OBS. Oh. So if it, I, if I make it direct. Oh wait, no. OBS is eating up that camera, so I need to disable it from there. Uh, if you need to disconnect, disconnect here. Let me uh, let me camera. switch the. And 
Okay. okay. Try now. There you go. That, that seems better. I am, but now my video code is still crap. That might just be because of the internet between you and me. I don't. Yeah. I don't think that's. I don't blame that on a. Uh, hmm. Yes, I think that's just the way it is today. Is there a way to make it like more um, central? Oh, sure. Like maybe have. Where would you like to be? Have it somewhere in between. I don't know. How, I don't know how VDO.ninja works. Do they have like a server or do you host that particular site? So it, it basically. And now you disappeared completely. So let me see what's going on over here in the director's view. Okay. Yeah, no, no, I'm fixing it. It's, it's on my. Okay. Uh, no, it's, it's going through. The video ninja servers do handshaking, but then it's basically it's all uh, stun traversal. So it's randomly picking a stun server and passing all the traffic through it. I don't know which one it is using. Yeah, because it seems awful like a lot like what happens with Discord if I'm on a server that's yeah. like based on the US. It's entirely possible that you're it is using a, a US Stun server. There might be a way for us to set which one it is. Let me go look at the director's mm -hmm. view here in just a second. Did I do this the right way? I hope I did. Yeah, yeah, this should be airflow down, which is, I think, what I want. Hmm. Either way, lights down is what I want, so. <laughs> we'll figure it out. I have three fans. So that gives me some opportunity for lighting. Uh, you're looking much better now, but you're also not moving that much. Uh, yeah. I am not seeing much in additional controls other than I can request that you change like which, uh, which thing you're doing, but I think we're good. I don't see anything at the moment. Uh, what's this do? Total upload bitrate. Cool. Two outbound connections. There's one audio connection. We are on air. Okay, yeah, I'm not seeing much. Uh, in terms of... It's my audio setting. It's room settings. Oh. Here. Let me, uh... We bump up the bitrate. Better, not better, can't tell. Uh, I, I can't, can't tell either. <laughs> yeah, let's switch reloads. Um, I'll move my head a bunch and we'll see how it goes. Yeah, it's doing something. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah, nah, no. All right, we'll, we'll get there. All right, let me finish putting some of this stuff together. Um, I need to get... This fan is in here. I want the power supply down there. Where are other places? I can put a fan on the back. It tells me. I guess the gigabit network does not solve everything. No, no, it doesn't. Uh, especially if someone has dragged anchor through <laughs> semi way three again, so, as we all know, that never happens. Yeah, it says I can put a fan in the back. Do I want to put a fan in the back? Let's put a fan in the back. Now I wish I had a fourth monitor up top. <laughs> I, I can't I can't get enough of monitors like that's a, it's a problem. I know. I have I have the same I I have the same problem in my office. Uh, once I started spinning up monitors for, uh, uh, I've got three primary monitors in my office, and they have since all been upgraded to 4K, which is great. Um, but one of them is yeah, that's where that goes. Uh, one of them is a, um, uh, I think 
don't want this to go this way. Yeah. Uh, I, have, I have those three 4Ks on my desk, but I also would like to have yet another monitor, uh, which is currently sitting off of my desk. And so whenever I have something that's on that monitor, it's very entertaining because I have to like duck down around the corner to see what it's doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the same with the uh, so I have one monitor on this side which is my main with my browser is open especially when I'm working my main monitor is an ultra wide so unless okay. I'm working with something related to the browser if I'm working on code or anything my browser is open on this one otherwise this is a lot of the screen share monitor and like sometimes I'll have stats on it got it um on, on this end is the vertical mounted monitor, which is for documentation. Mm -hmm. uh, love it since I've used it for that. Yep. I cannot code vertical. That's just so my, my neck doesn't work like that. <laughs> but all my data sheets can be on there. And I can be, like view one full big page. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and now I, I want one to like, sort of have the OBS controls over, ah. but my graphic card only has four ports and my fourth <laughs> monitor was here till I moved it to, to the back system. Now, the reason the fourth monitor was here because that's my um, my, my soldering station and all of that ah. stuff. So when I want a quick browser page on there, I have a monitor there and uh, another set of keyboard and mouse there to yeah. interact with that. Um, so, Either I'll need one of those like GT seven tens with like six or four HDMI ports on them, um, or or make maybe just another GPU to run a couple more. What GPU do you have in there now? We will see. Uh, RX five eighty. So I, if memory serves, you can get DisplayPort multipliers for the RX five eighty. So you can actually plug in more monitors that way. But you can also just get another RX 580. Well, okay, yeah, Amazon. Let's see what uh, theoretically, um, <laughs> depending on what all the port. Theoretically, I can get a 3090, but I don't have the money for it. Yeah, right. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's that. <laughs> 580s are a little, little cheaper, and by a little, I mean significantly. Okay. This is weird. All I get is USB hub. Oh, here, let me move it over here so I can actually... Uh, somewhere I can see, so I'm trying to figure out how to make this go on. And I can't. <laughs> huh. These are rare. What are? Uh, display port. Oh, the display. Okay. I thought there were, I thought there were devices that you could literally just put them in, and, and like it would basically give you two display ports, and and then it would. So like if you plug in two 1080 displays, it would be like, uh, it would tell the graphics card like, hey, I actually just just feed me as if I was a uh, 2560 by 1080, and then it does all the magic. But maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is one. It's a four four display multi monitor splitter thingy. Hell yeah. That's exactly what you're saying. Um so it can do like four K over like four screens. Okay. Um but like the thing is, it's only available at like an Arrow sub brand. It doesn't even sell locally. Oh, that's yeah. that's unfortunate. Someday, International Hardware Exchange. Someday, we're bringing it back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The um. Yeah, I guess I'll get cheaper graphic cards then. Yeah, that's kind of what I do. And that's, so that's part of the reason why I have that um, Radeon 6000 card, is that mm -hmm. this particular one 
is only a one gig card. The other cards that I have that are um, slightly better. So they are like R7320s, I think, or 340s. Um, and they are slightly better. They use the AMD GPU driver on Linux as opposed to the Radeon driver, which means they're they're supported just fine in Linux. They're not necessarily supported well in um, U-Boot, and I have absolutely no idea what their support looks like inside of yeah. EDK2 yet, um, especially on Risk Five. Um, but uh, well, on if you have the QEMU emulation stuff, then then it should work fine. Yeah, um, but I don't know if we do yet. Um, that's part of it's part of what I'm I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. Um, I I know for sure we're not going to have it in U-Boot, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, you can go ahead and remove my screen share. Now. Sure. Hang on. Boop. We'll go back to this one. Or do you want you, do you want you want to be off completely, or how do you want to do this? No, that's fine. That's uh, fine. Okay. I'll do that. Cool. It's all clunky, but whatever. I spent a little bit extra to get the white power supply for this case, and so far I am not regretting it. <laughs> He's very nice. Also, it means that all of the, uh, the cables that are going to go to the actual system will be white as well, and I didn't have to go to, like, cable mod or something to get them, which is a bonus. Aesthetics kind of do and kind of don't matter. <laughs> I have the most aesthetic looking case I've ever had. It's so huge I can't put it anywhere else except for under the desk. Oh, I'm an idiot. Um, I put the faceplate on backwards. <laughs> That's why nothing lined up. <laughs> okay, well, fortunately, all the metal that I just bent will be hidden behind faceplates. Um, but it's not the end of the world. Hey, they have one to five SATA splitters Ooh. as well. I didn't know that was a thing. Are they active? I hope. Like they should. They should have some amount of. I think so. Yeah. Look at this. Uh, it's 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 loading. Hang on. <laughs> we have a giant blurry mess. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah, it's that's trying definitely its active. Best. Yeah, that's definitely active. It's got some chips on it. Yeah, that makes much more sense now with all the correct uh, uh, holes lining up in the right places. Boy, I'm an idiot sometimes. Okay. Yeah, that's... So I think that is similar. Not exactly the same, but similar to the is tech that that's used. Is that part of a spec, or is it just like a hat? No, it's just a, it's just it's a four-port SATA expander. Those are those are things. So if you go like buy a uh, forty-five drive system, they're full of those, um, or at least originally they were. I think now they've okay. wisened up a little bit, and they're doing less port expanders and more. Hey, let's actually just put in more controllers because there's enough PCI slots now. But back in the day, that's how most of the forty-five drive system stuff yeah. worked. Is that they they just You'd get like a motherboard with like eight serial ports or eight SATA ports on it, and then they would put in um, mm -hmm. a whole bunch of SATA expanders like that, um, and go from there. It, it works. Um, it doesn't work mm -hmm. as well because it's SATA. So SATA um, SATA is not a full duplex protocol. Um, the way mm -hmm. Oh, this analogy is going to make no sense to you. Um, so we have this thing in the United States called party lines. Um, joke's always better when you explain it, right? So we have these things called party lines. Um, they're mm -hmm. very old 
deployments of telecommunications infrastructure. So basically, in rural areas of the United States, instead of them running a phone line to every single house, they would instead uh, just run mm-hmm. a single phone line to an entire neighborhood or down in, down a street, basically. And then, oh, I did that wrong, too. Um, they'd, they'd run a phone line down the street and connect multiple houses to it. And when I say down the street, I mean like a country road. So you get a whole bunch of different um, people plugged into this one thing. It would share a single phone number. Um, and if Martha down the street was using the phone, that means you couldn't. Um, and these are called party lines because there's a bunch of different people on them. And also when you would call the phone number, everybody's house would ring and, uh, yeah, you just kind of figure it out. Um, SATA works like that. Um, the connection between the controller and the lanes between the controller and the SATA drives expect that there is only one drive there as opposed to SAS. SAS is a switched network. So it works like Ethernet does. You can have multiple devices and then you can basically go and say, hey, I want to issue a command. Um, I want to tell drive tell drive three that I want block 8,426. And then mm-hmm. at that point, uh, the dr- drive three would get that command and it would no longer hold on the line. It would just be like, got it, no problem. And then it would send a message back. And so the channel can be used by anyone else while you're waiting for the drive to fulfill the request. Um, SATA can't do that. SATA, everything, it has to stay on the channel the entire time that you're doing operations to it. When you're not actively talking to the drive, um, it will release the channel. So you can go do something else. Uh, like talk to another drive and things like that. And that's what these these multipliers do, is that basically you sit there and you say, hey, I want to talk to drive three. Um, it connects to drive three. You can send requests to it. You can send, uh, it'll send data back. And then basically when it's done, it hangs up. Um, and then you can use that channel code to go talk to another drive. But you're spending all of the time waiting for the, the line is, the channel is in use while the drive is trying to access the data. This is less of a problem now with, flash than it was back in the day, but it, it can still be an issue. So it works in the sense of you can put more drives right. on it, so but, this would, but it doesn't work from the yeah. standpoint if you are doing... Yeah, you're doing lots of parallel, parallelization. Like, if you're going to set up like a big storage cluster with, say, ZFS, you got to be really careful how you plumb mm-hmm. all of your ZFS um, because if you're trying to write two stripes to the same, if you're trying to write the data to two separate drives that are on the same port expander, you're going to have a bad time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, cool. I think at this point, I can put the motherboard in. Uh, oh, right, those screws. Let's take these out. I don't think there's any place else I want to put a fan right now. Let's see how it goes. All right. What do we got? Got a bunch of cables that are currently in my way. There's a SATA cable. Where does this go? No, seriously, where does it go? And why? <laughs> it goes up to this thing. But there's no... Oh, my bad. That's a USB Type-C internal header. Okay. USB 3? Yeah, it's a, it's a USB Type-C uh... 10 gig, blah, 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 blah. It's, yeah, it's one of the fancies. It's one of the fancy ones. Okay, that's fine. I need this to not go through that hole. Yeah, you can you can get a USB 3 header to that converter easily. Yeah, well, I... Yes, only not with this motherboard. So... Take a walk through this motherboard, shall we? Um, so here it be. Um, front panel header is up here. Power connector. Um, 
this is some miscellaneous pins. I don't think that actually, like, it kind of looks like it could be a speaker, but it's not because it's labeled PWM. Uh, status indicator lights. Um, and then... That, if it's speed of bloom, then it could be for the fan. Could be, although the fan headers here, but these are not PWM. Um, I, I know that. Um, yeah. GPIO headers. This Ooh, is... It's a tiny fan. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, we'll, we'll look at that in a sec. Although, they're is it monstrously mm? tall. <laughs> no, it's smaller than 10 mil. It is... Hang on. Is it like 30 mm? Oh. Yeah, it's like... I want to say it's like a 5 mil fan. It's it's small. Um, but we'll check that here in a sec, because I've got the, the uh, Noctua. So, JTAG interface for talking to the, the SOC. This is the 16 gig of RAM, some standard GPIO. This is a power measurement header, um, so we don't want to mess with that. Uh, boot selection, uh, which we're not going to do anything in. And then those are all the headers on the motherboard. Mm -hmm. um, so like, there's no USB headers. Um, maybe? I don't know what the Asmedia 1074 yeah, is. Yeah, just, just use one of the M.2 slots. Well. So this one's going to be the hard drive, and this one's the Wi-Fi card. <laughs> and then oh, okay. there is this, there is a USB 3 hub, I think it's this chip here, and then the four ports coming off the back of that on the back, which is why I got this cable, so that I can then plug into here, loop it back into the case, and control the, um, the NZXT fan mm -hmm. header gizmo with it. So, ooh, it's got a chip link socket on it. That's fascinating. Um, interesting. Well, what's a chip thing socket? So, um, internally, uh, there is a protocol for communicating with peripherals on the sock that's called Tile Link, and Chip Link is a version of Tile Link with oh, okay, longer... Okay. Uh, timeouts on it so that you can put is something it, external. Is it like that? Uh, yeah, is it like that advanced JTAG situation? Kind of. I think even the uh, Seattle has one. Uh, not, not really, because it basically it it ties into like what is essentially the AXI bus internally. Mm -hmm. um, it's not really for debugging as much as it's for. So on my old, oh, I forgot to grab that from the other room. On my um, high five. Unleashed, which is the predecessor to this one, uh, the chip link port is how you plugged in the expansion board that gave you PCI Express. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's that massive pin cone. Yes. Which is which is why. Okay. It's a, it's a. Oops. Uh, everything's backwards. It's a massive number of landing pads. Like it's huge. <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. So I think AGX has something similar to connected to um, to the baseboard. Probably not chip link, but yeah, um, a connector of the of, of similar density. Probably. All right. You are not in all the way. No, you are not. There we go. Aha. I'm happy that they gave me a faceplate, but it's a cheap faceplate. <laughs> Not that I'm surprised by this. It's just, it's kind of funny. All right, I think these are the motherboard screws. Let's find out. It certainly feels like it's a motherboard screw. Okay. Ooh, it comes with a USB cable and an Ethernet cable underneath the motherboard the box. How exciting. So do me a favor, if you don't mind, would you look up the Asmedia mm -hmm. ASM 1074? There's a header on the board for that. It's tiny, so I don't know what it is. That might be the PCI Express switch, or... That's a USB hub. That's the USB hub. That's a USB hub. Interesting. Yep. 
I am curious what these pins go to then. Huh. Okay. Weird. Alright, so. I mean, if it's four port and all the four ports are broken out, I don't know what the way they go. Yeah, like, it, it might just be a JTAG interface for it. It is two by four pins. That's it. Yeah. And it's really tiny. Uh, I mean, it has I squared C E E prom and SPI flash prom in bed. So there is a there is a so right maybe, here. There is a tiny little E prom next to it, which I'm guessing is for configuring that. Oh, I'll have to look. There's a bunch of uh, E proms on the board, so that's not surprising. And there's like this one is a big flash ROM. I imagine this has actually got like first stage boot or can be used for first stage bootloader, but probably isn't being used for that right now. But that's fine. Um, all right. Hey, look, a micro USB cable. How sweet of them! I'm gonna need that. So that's how you get the serial console. All right, let's get the SD card installed. Uh -huh. Has anyone ever um, standardized on uh, micro BMC stuff? Um, I don't know. What what particular? So let's dive into that a little bit more. Like, what what specifically you're referring to? Um, so if um, like an MCU based BMC similar to what. The honeycomb has, ah, right, okay. but like standardized on the API side, that is like a common API that everyone uses. I don't think so. I mean, other than I mean, there's there's Redfish. Um, I do know that implementing Redfish in a microcontroller is hard because Redfish is really impressively, um, impressively and explosively full of garbage. <laughs> um, there is, uh, and what I mean by that is there is a tremendous amount of, like, you have to do a lot of JSON parsing, which is not something that you want to do in a microcontroller. Like, uh, yeah. There are lighted libraries, but you still need a decent microcontroller. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, some of the, so like, I've, I've, I've had that suggestion. I'm saying I've had that suggestion to do JSON parsing on on the microcontroller for my uh, remote control stuff mm. for the ro robots. I'm like, uh, how much code memory would it take? Yeah. It's an entire JSON parser. So I've got a... How um much time CPU time? Yeah. I have a... Um, uh, I have one of the... 32 by, I have a couple of 32 by 64 LCD panels that they make like uh, LCD billboards out of, or LED billboards out of, excuse me, not LCD, LED billboards. Um, mm -hmm. And I've got um, the Adafruit RGB matrix portal plugged into one of them. And we actually have this over at a friend's house at our, at our gym. And um, the, uh, one of the example programs that came with it is a is a werewolf clock uh, you can go look it up on Adafruit's site but basically it's um, it's a clock um, but it has the, the current status of the moon on it so it gives, you the, it gives you the current time and it gives you the date and it also tells you what percentage of the moon is full and how many hours until the moon rises and how many hour, and if the moon is risen how many hours until, how much time until the moon sets um, it's pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's very pretty, um, but <laughs> the the sad part is when you try to boot the the poor thing, um, it has to get all of that data. So time is easy. There's a couple really good microcontroller based services for getting time. Um, the micro the the it's a based on an AT SAMD fifty one. Um, yep, yeah, that's the one. So it's based on an AT7051. Mm -hmm. And um, getting the time working on it, fairly straightforward. But um, 
the clock skews wildly because there isn't a good uh, controlled mm -hmm. oscillator on it. So I I've since put on it a yeah. DS3231 and tied that into um, in over I squared C and it's, it's ridiculously accurate now, which is great. But getting this the phase of the moon. Um, yeah, as you I can guess see there. Mm -hmm. To get that data, you have to go talk to I forget what observatory it is, and it spits back this massive blob of JSON, and it takes like 8k of memory to parse this massive JSON blob to get back the 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 moonrise and the moonset times, and then you got to do that every day. And it frequently, like, as I started adding code for, like, the, uh, the RTC, like, we started running out of memory on the microcontroller because of those JSON blobs coming in. Um, so, yeah, uh, JSON on microcontrollers is hard. And the ATCMD51 is beefy. Like, it's got um, yeah. 256K of RAM, which, I mean, you know... Mm -hmm doesn't sound like a lot but when you're yeah for a micro for a, a micro lot. it's a lot yeah and that's one of the things you you need yeah. a fair amount of it if you're going to be doing uh anything with um circuit python anyways but yeah it's uh it's still um it's even that it's not quite enough <laughs> yeah it's 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 like some of the newer my uh, larger ones have you can add four megabytes of like uh, external memory mm -hmm. on them. Th those should be like really good for JSON passing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Speed, so like the, the ESP32 S2, um, mm -hmm. there's a, a PS... Even some of the SCM32 ones. Yeah, even some of the SCM. So, so um, uh, the Espressif, the maker of the ESP32 S2, they make a PS RAM mm -hmm. part. That is 16 meg of static RAM over yeah. SPI. Um, yeah. And that's yeah. and they made that specifically for the ESP32 parts so that you could parse JSON. Uh, which is just <laughs> awesome and terribly sad all at the same time. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what people the... blame AI ML to drive the memory requirements, but like low key, it's JSON overhead. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's 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 totally it's JSON overhead. <laughs> like, and it's not even low key. Like, it's just <laughs> you know a fun overhead story. Mm -hmm. Um, I was so when I got that uh, the gigabit connection um, in. I was doing all sorts of download benchmarks, seeing what, how, how much time it takes. So like, AOSP source code download instead of like half a day takes thirty minutes now. Wow. And some other things, my VPN stuffs faster. Um, but I was like, all right. One of the things that I've struggled with is um, Xilinx's tools for FPGA, Vivado, Vitus. Um, they've been massive. They are like thirty-ish gig. Of JSON? Um, or like 28. Oh, no, of, of Java. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like the weird part is that the installer is written in Java as mm -hmm. well. And earlier I thought that it downloaded and it extracted at the same time, but it wasn't doing that. Oh, God. It just downloaded. So that thing maxed out at 10 megabytes a second with all cores on my Ryzen 9 3950X at a 100%. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm... Like it, it was using just one-tenth of, of the network bandwidth because it was CPU bottleneck. Yeah, that sadly doesn't surprise me. <laughs> it, yeah, things like that just... And let me guess, it's like install anywhere or something. That's what it's actually oh. using. Yeah. 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 yeah that, that whole ecosystem like, is it's, just... It's, like, it's their own city. Java thing built in. Uh, 
it's like i was like so sad like it's one of the things i really needed some speed speeding up on because of how much cpu it requires to download the darn thing right. so like whatever i do unless i have like some baller server thing with like a hundred cores or something i'm i'm stuck at 10 megabytes a second it's almost so cheaper it's to like go spin an, up like a, it's like an hour and a half up yeah it's it's almost cheaper to actually go um spin up like a c5 a 64 xl in amazon for the hour it's going to take to extract the thing and then re-download it again <laughs> extraction is not a problem it extracts fine oh it's just the download it's just the download Ugh. yeah that's uh, that's why I, yeah that's why I, I thought it was extraction because of all the CPU. It's not. It downloads and then extracts. Ugh. That's because you can download only. Gross. And that does the same thing. What if you... Uh, Do they give you the option for an offline installer? Does that help you? They have like a full run anyway pack, mm, but yep. I've never used it. Mm. Especially because I, I wonder if they have all the intricacies of running it on Linux built in or it's just for like Windows users. Yeah, yeah. Although it's all Java, but still, you know. Yep. Still have to communicate to flash the uh, boards and all. Okay, so let me give you an update of what I've, what I've done. Um, so motherboard's been installed, backplate's been installed, got the Wi-Fi adapters onto the uh, IO backplate, the... SD card with the BSP on it is installed. We'll talk about that in a second. Wi-Fi card, the antenna cables, and the SSD. Uh, I'm going to drop in the graphics card because I can. Um, and as it turns out, the cabling is not that hard on any of this, which is great. Um, oh, you've disappeared, and you're back. Very cool. Yeah, I, I love how how um, modern computers basically don't need any cables if you go the right way. <laughs> on, on the motherboard side of thing apart from the power well there's gonna be some like your ssds are all yes mounted. yeah yeah because they're those your are... ssds are all mounted your yeah. cards if, if you use a if you don't need a super high power card that's drawing power from pci yep. there's nothing much left yeah pretty much and now with the uh 12 volt power supplies the 12 volt only power supplies that will be reduced to like four pins Right. Or yeah. six. It'll be interesting to see how that all fits together. Oh, interesting. That can come out. Okay. So, front panel I.O. connectors. Those go through here. We're going to need those. We're going to need the ATX 12, or the ATX connector for the motherboard. And that's it. Oh, that's a, that's a big cable. But hey, it's white. So it'll look party. Which is what I want. Go through here. Uh, that way is the way I want it. So it'll line up correctly, and then I should be able to just shove this through and plug it in on the other side. Um, I think. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah, it's not so bad. Alright, and then I gotta put the fan controller in here. That's the other big thing that needs to happen before I go too, too far. Oh no. I'm glad this is the only thing I need to plug into this because this is... Well, that's not true. There's one other thing I need to plug in, which is the... The fan controller takes, I think... Yeah, it takes a... Um, uh, what's it? Uh, I'm in the way. SATA power. Um, so that's fine. So I picked this, this fan controller. This is the... Um, this is the NZXT RGB and fan controller, and it is supported by open source fan controller software. So I should be able to control the blinking lights and the fan speeds from Linux, because one of the things that this mother, so this motherboard has fan headers on it, but I am not gonna connect any of the fans to the fan headers because uh, those fan headers don't do anything except turn on the fans at 100%. They just provide 12 volt power. There's no tack. There's nothing, um, which is why I bought this. Um, 
trying to see if there's a way if I can pop off this bottom panel. Oh, I can pop off the front panel. Even better. Once I open up this screw. All right. Anybody saying anything in chat? We have folks that we can talk to, questions we can answer, or is it is it all still quiet because it's Saturday and everybody was busy doing other things? Yeah, I, I, ooh, lot of noise, all right, uh, let's see, is the noise less? It's much better now, yeah, you were, you were, you had a lot of gain uh, on your mic. No, it's, it's, it's my fan, it's my desk fan, where is the thing I'm looking for? I don't know, what are you looking for? Let's start there. <laughs> yeah, um... Yep, we have one comment. People are asking how it's going. I really don't know why um, Marcin wasn't able to find the chat. I don't know either. It looks That's like weird. other people are. We've got cool. a question. And what the person is, the is asking how is it going? It's going well. Um, how is it going? going well it's going well so just need to um, finish up some wiring and bits and pieces here I'm gonna try and get this fan controller mounted somewhere um, figure out where that's gonna go uh, but at this point I think I'm at the point where we can start talking about oh I need to wire up the, um, the front panel on the uh, on the motherboard Mm -hmm. All those cables are actually dangling right here in front of me, so this should be fairly straightforward. Uh, and it's even labeled! Oh, nice. That's great. All right. Uh, is the power management stuff built into the sock, or is it like a separate IC on that? Uh, power, how so? Can you be a little more specific? Like, if, is, if you press the power on oh. button, is the sock directly connected to that, or is it like a separate power... So there's a series of power PMIX because a whole bunch of different voltages are needed. But yes, you just press the power button and it goes. Um, okay. It was it was designed so that it'll just it'll just work, which is great. It's just um, it should be fairly pretty straightforward. Uh, what goes back there? The hard drive LED. Good. I don't need that. Which one of you is the hard drive LED? That's the reset switch. That doesn't help me. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, most of these systems have a a, a, a big old tree of PMIX um, that, okay, putting this video card in was, was, was a mistake right now, but that's an easy to fix mistake. Um, have a tree of PMIX to provide all the various um, voltages that are needed in the correct order. But those are... Uh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Like some stuff has to turn on before other stuff does. It can it can be exciting. Yeah, did I tell you the story of my blown X eighty six board, which is now fixed? Ooh. No, what happened? Um, so I had this uh the the probably like the first non mino board, um X eighty six board. Okay. Um, this was a Jaguar board. It came a long while back. It was very, um, you know, Chinese-centric board, so none of the websites or the documentation were in English. Mm. They reached out, wanted to see if I wanted to review it, and I would have been, yeah, send it over. Um, luckily, it was x86, so it, it, it still runs the latest stuff uh, with, the, with, with the company being okay. closed like months after the board was released um so yeah <laughs> they didn't oh, make a lot of money <laughs> um but it was cheap 
it, they sold it for like a hundred USD okay. or something, maybe even less. And um, it had an Intel chip without a power VR GPU with a proper Intel HD GPU, uh, Intel Atom, um, and I think a gig of memory okay. um, and UEFI BIOS of, of all things, properly working UEFI BIOS. Wow. Who made it? Was it a uh, um, American Mega from Trends AMI. or something? A AMI. AMI. Yeah, that that's why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love them or hate them. And um, they make a BIOS. Uh, yeah, that works. So, yeah. So I was planning. So that's what was. So it has a shiny CPU on it. That doesn't need a heatsink. It's an x86 CPU that you can remove the heatsink and it looks nice. Cool. Um, so that was what's going to run the full full see-through LCD clock thing that I just showed. Okay. Yep. Um, and actually, it is currently running the small screen demo. Okay. Um, and I put it, it's a five volt board with a barrel jack input. Okay. Um, Previous to that, I was testing a string of LEDs that run at 12 volts. Mm. So I had my bench power uh, supply, and you, you can see where this is going. Uh -huh. right? I had my, my bench power supply configured for 12 volts, and I, mm -hmm. and, I, and I thought I had the LEDs plugged in, and I turned it on, and nothing happened. <laughs> oh, no. um, yeah, so I ended up blowing the board. Um, luckily, oh, no. even though, yeah, luckily, uh, after a lot of panic, um, I put my head to it, um, and uh, the way the voltages and the current draw was reacting, it was um, looking like there's a short key diode that was getting, um, you know, that was passing everything and, and shorting itself out, protecting the other components. So there was still a chance that it all survived. Okay. Um, so uh, it was all surface mount, so it wasn't apparent which component was that short key diode. So I did the good old trick of pouring isopropyl alcohol all, all over the board <laughs> and powering it up. Uh -huh. The component that was getting hot had the alcohol evaporate. So since mm -hmm. it's a short key diode, you just cut that shit off, um, and then the board worked. Um, Got it. So it's working now. If you put five volts through it, I'll, I have other, uh, I have short key diodes on hand. That's good. So I'll install them as that's, another protection. That's usually helpful. And um, yeah, and hopefully that should go into the frame by tomorrow once the monitor arrives. Cool. Uh, the multiple oh nos you were getting for me are that the fans that I got. The Leon Lee fans <laughs> use a different RGB header than the NZXT Ooh. controller. So I'm going to need to rework those. Uh -oh. Yeah. I was looking to check that before I bought them, and it looked like they were going to be okay, but they are not. Uh, it should be fairly straightforward to just swap it out, though, so I'm not too worried about it. But I can at least power the fans. I've got the... Um, a little adapter cable plugged in, so I'm happy about that. Um, and then I also have this. Now, can I... Yeah, I can get stuff out the back. Great. So I have this lovely thing, which is a desk stand for the Wi-Fi. Because definitely are not oh, yeah, going to be able to plug the antennas into here with the case on on top of it. Um, you can actually see the, the headers coming out, which is great. I have like this AC. Yeah, ooh, I have this it out. Wait, I'll, I'll show the one I have. Okay. Luckily, this is outside. So I have this Wi Fi and it's an AC 1600 unit. Um, and the problem is, I bought it as. Uh, hoping that it will uh, work as an AP, but sadly, its AP mode is so very much flawed. Yeah, a lot of them um, are like that. I just went through the same thing the other day, trying to find a so Wi-Fi adapter that would work with a Pi in AP mode. But yeah, go on. Yeah. 
so it, it never like got to see any useful amount of use uh, and i and i still have it like packed um just like taken out once but it's like a really nice wi-fi if i ever want to say set up station or in another room or something but that's not happening anytime soon so it's just like in the box for if someone wants it got it uh but it comes with this really nice stand for the end oh, Really hefty one too, yeah. Nice antenna stands are always a bonus to get. And I was planning all yeah. But like something like this can be reused if I if I want to like extend the antenna of anything over some period. Yeah. Actually I might even do it for my current uh system uh, has a Wi-Fi, but I don't. I, I only use the Bluetooth part of it for headphones sometimes. Um, but it's always nice to have handy. Yeah, we we'll see. All right, which one of these Ethernet cables is the longest? Apparently, this one by an inch or two, which is less than I need. <laughs> it's all right. I'll figure it out here in a second. All right. I was watching the uh, Linus Tech Tips home renovation video today, and uh -huh. he introduced something that intrigued me, and of course you would know. Um, I got introduced to the LAN cable tone generator. Okay. For, like, trying to find cables, or... So you, you like, put that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've got... I've got a, uh, I have one like that. Uh, the one I have is called the Fox and Hound, but it basically does the same thing. Uh, it makes it really easy to find cables in the, in the walls, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that's not super pretty, is it? Okay. Can I, I don't know. Hmm. Okay. I'm hemming and hawing because I'm trying to figure out how I want to, if I want to add more, if I want to add a third fan in here, which I kind of think I do, and where? Um, oh, your video cut out. No, that's me. Okay. Okay. So what's interesting about this case is that you have to screw this top fascia on in order to um, close it. And... If you don't screw the top fascia, and that's also how you get uh, the the other panels off. <laughs> it's not. I would think it would have clips, but for whatever reason, it has five screws. Um, one in each one of these giant holy things here that you can see. This little one goes up here. Um, but you know, whatever. So I'm going to uh, tempt the fate of the gods by putting the screws in now, despite having not tried to power this on yet. <laughs> could possibly go wrong. Yeah, well, good luck with that. That's right. Okay, and I need one of these. Perfect. I can plug it into video. Or into the keyboard and mouse, I should say. Alright, so. You come over here and get plugged in here. I'm actually impressed that the depth of the um, the cable area for plugging in stuff is actually really good. This excites me. I was expecting it to be particularly awful. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to need this. So, Speaking of booting Risk Five systems, so it comes with this micro USB cable. This is super important because it goes into this port that you can't really see. Hang on, mm -hmm. I'll, move, I'll move stuff so you can. Um, you need to use this micro USB port. Give me one second. Get that out of the way. Get these out of the way. So. SD card with the BSP on it. BSP for those who don't know. Um, board support platform. So it's basically the stock operating system that Sci-5 has built. It's based off of Debian. Uh, it'll be good enough for what we want to do for right now. Uh, this port right here is labeled console port, 
and this is the serial console for watching the system boot, getting all the messages out of it and all that jazz. I have a way to share that with everyone, which we will have up in a minute here. Let me plug it into my fancy little contraption. Yeah, here. I, I, I got into another interesting discussion on Twitter about this. Mm -hmm. um, I've I've started to see a lot of microcontroller projects where where it's just the microcontroller broken out. Yep. But because they need to have um, USB serial, they always have this FTDI or other chip on it, any other bridge chip on it. Um, and my idea was like just integrate that into the silicon. Yeah. So. What what if there's a console? Not USB ACM and all of that stuff. That's the whole USB IP, but like a separate like soft packet situation where it's a separate silicon still, but like just physically connect the UART lines to it. Hmm. Um, people were worried about the cost and all, but like if if you think about it, any new from from like an industrial standpoint, everyone's probably using that. Not a whole lot. Everything runs serial from a software point on, on both the sides, but the link's usually USB over a serial converter. Yeah, so th the reason why most of the time you don't do that, and this is actually something that we're going to find out here in a second, is to see which way they've implemented it. So there's, there's two ways that these ports can be implemented. The way that I prefer and the way that everybody does it. <laughs> and the way that I prefer is when you plug in the USB port into a USB host, it should, it power, should power up the serial adapter. Um, not everyone yes. does that. In fact, most people don't. Yeah. Um, it's annoying when they do. Yeah. Actually, just to test one thing, I have a Check couple this. of boards on my desk, and I want to see if that's how they implement it. Uh, so, let me explain this little thing that I'm sitting here showing on the uh, on the the monitor, which you can barely see, and I'm I'm working on getting a better better window for here in just a second. Um, Aha! It's it's bus power. Wonderful. So yeah, the new ninety six port spec powers it over the USB port, not not the device. So part of the reason why that isn't necessarily um, built in is for that reason. Um, because the you yep. want it to be device powered. And now you've got to go deal with a whole separate power domain inside of your sock, which is annoying. All right. Yeah. But like if it's a pop situation. All right, so now that I've got this, and here, let me, uh, let me, wonderful, I can get this. It actually does a better job than I thought it was going to. All right, let me, give me one second. We're going to add, I need overhead. Yeah, nope, overhead with Sahaj, that's what I want, and I want to add to this a window capture. Specifically, putty. Wonderful. I can move this over here. It's gonna be small. Actually, I can make it. Hopefully, that's legible. We'll find out. Boop. Okay. So now, so what this little device is, since we're we're sharing it over SSH, but now you can see it. So this is this is a little Raspberry Pi 3A. Um, it's got a TFT display on the front of it that's really low resolution, but for what we're doing, we don't care. Um, and it's got a uh, USB port on the side, which is now plugged into the serial console port of uh, the sci-fi port. So this is basically acting as a serial console, and because it's a Raspberry Pi 3A, it has Bluetooth, so this giant Logitech keyboard sitting over here talks to it. And I mean giant, like the keyboard is approximately seven times the size of the actual device, but whatever. Um, so. uh, the... Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. I have the one with the mouse. Do they still make that? FTDI two. Okay. Uh, I believe yes, they do. I specifically got this one for a uh, a previous job where um, we were allowed to have um, we couldn't have chat. We were allowed to use chat, but we couldn't have certain chat applications like Discord installed on our machines because of corporate firewall mm -hmm. policies. And we also couldn't have streaming music service mm -hmm. on our desktops, but we could over Wi-Fi. So I bought this ridiculous thing and then plugged it into like a $12 tablet and used this as my music streaming thing at work, which was great. Um, okay, so I have, I have the things, which is awesome. So I should be able to now say PicoCom uh, dev TTY USB no, ACM. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah, USB zero. Uh, I think it's zero. All right, cool. So we've got that connected and happily sitting there. Oh, this can actually get bigger. Cool. I am depriving myself of a couple of lines. Now I'm not. There, that's the that's the correct size. All right, is that still readable? Yep. Cool. All right. So now I need an HDMI cable. Now this this is going to get very exciting now. Um, so let me go over here to Matrix A. I want to add a window capture, the existing one. Cool. We'll put that up here in the corner. That's fine. That's ready. And I have an HDMI cable that I bought for this, which is, of course, hermetically sealed. But I have. Will the display come up? Uh, it should. That's what we're going to find out. But we'll at least be able to see the. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, we'll at least be able to see the. Uh, here, I might be able to actually. I should. I should make a uh, put a couple other things into this uh, the scene. So add to this scene. Mm -hmm. I want I want Sahaj. There you are. Put you underneath the put you underneath the console, and then theoretically I can add myself as well. Assuming that the battery hasn't died on my camera. It hasn't. Fascinating. I was totally expecting that to have happened by now. Yay. Uh, and I did bump my green screen, so you're, you're seeing the mess behind me. Let me try and fix that. That way. Maybe? No? Yes? Oh, I need to, need to rotate. I ah, can't see anything. Better. No, you can't. That's okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push the button, and it all will become clear. Well, bam! All right, so, um, and I await. Oh, Good. Yes. All right. All the appropriate, all the audio sources are there. That was the thing I was worried about. Uh, <laughs> all right. I'll plug this in. Plug in this ridiculous HDMI cable. Plug this into the switcher. Put this in input three of the switcher turn on the monitor that's plugged into the switcher as well. Um, I'm not worried about the power. F I'm not worried about the Wi-Fi yet, because I don't, I don't even know if the BSP has support for the Wi-Fi in it. We'll find out. Um, Ethernet. That's the other thing that needs to be plugged in. That will be important. Click. All right. Wi-Fi support is another thing. I've I've dealt with an BSP where it had support for TTY USB, but it did not have support for TTY ACM. Oh yeah, different drivers. There's there's a large, large yeah, set like of who, drivers for the who skips that. 
People who don't want to who don't want, don't want to wait for compile times. <laughs> it's not that big. You say that. All right, moment of truth. I have pressed the button. The fan is spinning. Let's go. I have no blinking lights, but that's mm -hmm. not surprising. Because there's actually kind of is surprising. I think there should be lights on on the board. Did you press the power button? I did. The fan spinning. Uh, and there's also no output on the the th this thing. So let me um, do this. Uh, USB. It's possible I might have the wrong. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely not. And I don't know why. Okay. What have I done wrong? Uh, none of the power indicator lights came on either, which is weird. Um, okay. So, if at first you don't succeed, pull up the manual. Where's the, where's RTFM the is always step number two. Well, you know, I, I did actually read through it once already, so I'm this was wasn't completely <laughs> blind. Calm. I was I was wondering if you took the it just works part of it too seriously. No, no, no. I I I as I said, I I pulled up some documentation a few other odds and ends before I got started. All right, getting started guide in English, please, and thank you. All right, let's see here. Oh, I wonder if this actually labels what those things are. Of course not. All of those headers that we're super curious about, no information on. Um, I do need to get a battery, but I can... I have them in the other room, but I, I'm wired to my desk, so I'm not going to do that at the moment. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, yep, 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 okay. Oh, the RX 500 series cards are qualified. Interesting. Uh, AX200 Wi-Fi, which is what I have in here, so that's cool. 970 Evo Plus. Well, I'm using a 970 Pro, but whatever. Uh, Ethernet power cables. Okay. Boot mode switches should be... Yeah. Set in figure four, so it should be... Three and five are on, and everything else is off, which is not at all how that. No, that is how that's set. Okay, that's that's good. All right, CPU fans connected. Yes. Mm hmm. Yeah, it specifically says that the fans like it gives you ground, twelve in, and then pin three is the tack, which has no connection to the board. <laughs> so why bother? Um. Said, okay. I need to put a battery in, but I don't need to do it later. It's not critical for right now, and I have them, so that's good. Uh huh. Connect the power connector. Okay. Before the enclosure is closed, womp womp. Um. Board should power up with the CPU fan and the three LEDs as seen in Figure 11. Uh, yeah, no. I got none of those LEDs, which doesn't make any sense because they're voltage-controlled LEDs, so they should just turn on. Do I have to... Do I have to hit the button? I shouldn't have to hit the button. Are you sure the SD card has the image right written to it? It's supposed to, yes. Um, let me see what happens if I hit the... There's a different power button on the front of the... So actually, I should be able to flip this over here in a second. Let me... Let me switch back over to the other view. Womp. Alright. Um, right, so 
I want the screwdriver that's right here to take these screws out again. Get that out of the way for the moment. Hello. <sighs> Should have probably not closed the case, Yep, Carl. Nah, it's, I, I did say that I knew I was tempting fate by putting the screws in the case. And especially since the manual said, don't close the case until you turn it on. Um, so, as I said, I read the manual. You, you, you were just teasing Morphe. <laughs> yeah. You were just teasing yeah, Morphe. Yeah, exactly. Alright, so, now, once more, let's take this pane off without trying to get too much finger grease on it. Flip this over. We should be able to see everything. Oh, there's a power cord there. That's annoying. Um, hello there, NZXT box. You are the perfect height to hold up this computer so that the power cord doesn't die. It's kind of a shame that that's where that is, but whatever. All right, that's good enough. You can sort of see it. I need to move it so that the, uh, there we go. All right. So, I'm going to flip the switch on the power supply. All right, the power supply's on. And then there's a power on button on the board, this one right here. Boop. There are no green lights. There should be green lights. Why are there no green lights? Why? Oh, that's why. I figured it out. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. I think, I think actually your video is in the way, Sahaj. <laughs> I, do, I hope do. I haven't fried anything. Um, hang on. Hang on, hang on. The, uh, I did, I did plug in the cable on the power supply, but it turns out it came out. <laughs> There's two for the ATX connector, and one of them is disconnected. So I'm going to uh, reconnect that and probably do a better job this time. There we go. Are you gonna, you gonna walk in this time? Good, good. That's 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 what we want. Okay. Fun spinning. I think it was only getting like five volts and not twelve volts. We'll see here in a second. Now what have I done? Oh, I've, I've removed the power cord. <laughs> Hang on. Not working so well holding it that way. Uh -huh. All right. This goes here. Oh, hey, lights come on now. All right. That's exciting. Yay! What's not exciting is the noises these fans are making. Um... Alright, so obviously not that console. That's the console we want. Alright, it's booting. Uh, what fan was slash is trying to spin? It will be. Let's transition over here and see what happens. Yeah, it's it's the it's their SDK. Like it's their BSP. Like. I wasn't expecting great things, but this supposedly has this has all the bits and pieces to get um, graphics and stuff working. Oh, it still has the, the nifty little heartbeat thing. That's cool. No, seriously, what is making all the horrible noises? All right, it's doing things. I might have like one of the fans tight in too tight, or there might be something underneath the power supply fan. I can figure that out here in a minute. Things are starting still. What's going on back here? Do we have, do we have spinning fans? No, this fan is not spinning. Okay, that could be the issue. Ah, and there is indeed stuff in the way of the fan. Panic for something? Not surprising. Yeah. I'll check it in a second. Alright. 
Ethernet's come up. That's the start. Yeah, there's. Uh, I guess the G. Okay. Uh, that's alright. I can scroll back. Uh, Mac B's up. Okay, so. Uh, hey, I did start putting the right password. All right. Uh, did I put this on the right output? Probably not. I should fix that. Boop. Yeah. Anything? Anything? Bueller? 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 Start takes over the serial console. It will just not fight. You need to run and start it from the screen itself. You're, you've turned into a robot, unfortunately. How about now? Yeah. Much better. Right. right, I was saying StarTex won't work from the from the console. Sure. I've done that before. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, that's the. I don't think so because it doesn't find the actual display. So, right. Well, we're not using frame buffer. That's the that's the primary difference here. Uh, one, two. Oh, that's why. Four. Okay. I'm on the wrong input. Let's see what happens if I do that. Mm, no signal. Okay. Are, are you seeing something on the display? Not yet. Or is it just us? Uh, so the thing that you were seeing oh. a moment ago was actually a different Raspberry Pi. Um, so at the moment, mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of nothing, but I'm going to hit the reset button and see what happens. So we'll get we'll get all the kernel messages again as it boots up, and then I'll try and figure out what I did wrong. Oh, it's a NeoPixel, and it changes color during various phases of startup. Isn't that interesting? Okay, that's what we want. Stuff, stuff, and things. fan on the CPU is obnoxiously loud for how tiny it is. <laughs> uh, that's going to have to change, and I don't know how yet. Well, it found the Bluetooth on the Intel card, so that's something. All right, you said you saw a kernel panic here at some point. Let's see if we can find it again. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, look at that. Uh, it found the Wi-Fi card. That's funny. There you go. What right. crashed though? Mm -hmm. What crashed? Fortunately, I have scroll back. Who are you? Radeon crashed. Error doing GPU in it. Cool. Well, that's not good. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I might have picked up the the broken Radeon card that I have. All right. Well, here. Let me um, let me do this then. Oh, actually, I am. Um, I have a different card that I can pick up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and if I tell this to turn off, does it actually turn itself off? Edge in the chat. Hi, Ed. And he's saying there's a design for a bigger Noctua fan and a shim to connect to it. Sweet! I have a bigger Noctua fan. Uh, I just need I need the shim. Uh, <laughs> if you've got a link to that part, Ed, that would be great. 
Uh, because I imagine it's like a Thingiverse thing. Alright, while that's doing that, I'm going to put us on... And another person is saying, Hi, Uncle Carl. I, yes, that would probably be Andrew. Um, hi, Andrew. Alright, so... Let me... What can I... What can I put on here? Alright, I'm going to go put this back on overhead, and I'm going to go run away for a second, grab a couple different video cards and a battery, and be right back. Um, don't go anywhere. Uh, this is still trying to shut down, and it's having a heck of a time doing it. Um, so I'm just going to press the power button. Or flip the power switch on the back, that's fine too. Alright, I have a different... So first off, I have batteries for the RTC. So let's put a battery in the RTC. I'm back as well. Alright, battery in the RTC. And... Done. That was easy. I had them here, so it wasn't hard. It was just I forgot to grab it from the other room. Uh, I need my screwdriver, which I'm going to guess I have put right here. Cool. All right, give me this. Let's take this 6450 card out and put in a different 6450 card. <laughs> 6450 7000 series, sort of the best generation. Ooh, yeah, I think this is the 6450 that I'm just off Very dead, but that's fine. Um, oh, that's what that's for! Oh, excellent. Okay, cool. Um, there's a whole bunch of dead space on the side of the case. Uh, which is unfortunate because mm -hmm. I, I don't need it, but it came um, and it looks kind of ugly at the moment because it's a giant hole over here. But it came with a and there's cables sticking out of it. Um, here I'll this this hole right here. But it came with a faceplate for it. Um, so I'm gonna try and slap that in quickly here. Uh, I think it's this one. Oh yeah. Much better. Oops. Except that I have one of the flags sticking out. There, that's that's even better still. I approve, and then there's another one that can go over here, ah, uh, to make it even prettier. Yes, yes. I approve twice. <laughs> Wonderful. I'll take it. All right. Cool. So, um, graphics card. Um, so what I brought over is I have a... Um, this is a... R7240. Uh, but I also have a... Um, I think I, I had a bunch of these passively cooled uh, 6450s, but this one's super hot, which means it's probably the one that's dead, which is why it was mm -hmm. failing to initialize. I do have this in-box gigabyte one, um, but 
the reason I didn't want to use it is twofold. One, um, the board is ugly as sin. And two, it has this really obnoxious heat sink fan on it. Um, oh, I'm... Show it. I, show right, it, show I've, it. I've been... I've been holding things up to the camera and you can't see them. Okay, so this is this is the, the Asus card that I had in there. It's passively cooled and I like these because they're passively cooled, but it's also really hot, which means this is the one that has failed on me. So, oops. Um, this is R7 240, uh, which I can totally use. Uh, this is an AMD GPU based card though, so it uses a different driver. Um, so that's something I need to be aware of. And then, Um, oh, hang on a second. Did I? Maybe. Hang on a second. Uh, uh, so this particular one is GCN 1.2, which was the beginning mm -hmm. of AMD GPU. Um, but the, the one that I have, so I have this, this gigabyte Right, but box. the AMD GPU support isn't great. Right, I have this gigabyte box, so this one was in the box, but it is just butt ugly as sin. Like, it's ri ridiculously large, it's got this obnoxious uh, VGA connector on the edge of it, and it has that huge heat sink fan. <laughs> yeah, that fan. <laughs> um, but, you know what? We're gonna... We're that gonna go fan. with it today. That fan, yes. That fan. Uh, and we'll see if this will get us where we want to be for right now. Yeah, the AMD GPU driver stuff will work. The only downside is I will not be able to get it to work in U-Boot for a bootloader. Um, it will work in... Um, oops. It's, so it's, I so always little. feel like the AMD GPU stuff, AMD GPU driver stuff was never very stable. It still isn't on any platform. Like x86 has really? less problems and ARM has a lot. But I guess it depends older on Radeon um, drivers were still way more stable. Yeah, we'll see. All right. Yeah. And now it's a race of who's louder, the CPU fan or the GPU fan? Hmm. But it's booting. Oh, I think it actually just did something. Okay. On the display? Yeah. Probably not yet. Let me uh, let me switch switch. Transition button. See what happens. I bumped my thing again, so now you get to see part of the wall behind me. But who cares? Uh huh. Radeon came up with no problems. Oh. Yep. Something's happening. Since the Wi-Fi card drivers are there, I should probably, like, put the antennas on the mounty thing. <sighs> well, the Wi-Fi is probably good enough. Ooh, that that's... Them. I don't know how what your exa your experience has been, but I've bo blown a few, co a few uh, transceivers because I antennas? missed the very clear warning since... since yeah. Well... So be it. I bought two of those cards, and like I said, I don't even know if they're going to work because they they showed up improperly packaged from China. So, eh. uh, okay, something's that, something's happening. Uh, uh, DRM has DRM has definitely DRM started. Has I have a prompt. Stuff correctly. Okay. Ooh, ooh, I see it. Yeah. Oh, uh, maybe the Getty stuff isn't configured. It's not. Now, if I run StarTX, it might work. The documentation says to run StarTX go down that path. Uh, okay. So let's see what happens. Because we should get like an XFCE desktop. Uh, it's asking what sort of battery goes into the RTC. I don't know. It is a, uh, it's these, uh, uh, these CR1220s. My camera's autofocus is not turned on. You can get them at your local grocery store usually. Um, but yes, uh, a lot of the Adafruit stuff also uses them, so I actually had like 
bunches of them lying around. I would send them to you, but it's an actual pain in the butt to send batteries. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. As is surprising to no one, attempting to start X off of an SD card is slow. Hey! hey! <laughs> hey, there you go. Look at that. Notes. Is, is uh, that it? Oh, no. Ooh, that's coming up in pieces. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was not expecting <laughs> this to be fast. There it goes. There's the background. And the terminal is trying. Oh, Do I have this that's a bit too slow. Maybe their SD card default speed is not that fast. Oh, I'm sure it's miserable. Because it's probably running in SPI mode. Uh, Let's run GL Mark 2. The date and the timer, right? Uh, I, I would be surprised if GL Mark is even installed on this thing, Sahaj. Like, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> no, no. No, you'll have to install it, but... <laughs> oh, that's why the mouse is not working. Although okay, David look. hasn't had GLMark2 in the repositories for a mouse while. Mouse is plugged in now. All right, so... Let's see what we do have. Accessories. It's basically a pretty generic... It's pretty generic XFCE. Um... Mm -hmm. Fire up a terminal. Let's see if we get it. Oh, look at that. We do get it. Wrong keyboard. That's not the wrong keyboard, but I'm still not able to type. Hello. Oh, that is the wrong keyboard. <laughs> e, too many keyboards. All right. <laughs> yeah, not installed. Okay. I feel you. I'm not entirely surprised by that. Let's, um... Pfft. Oh, this Yeah, okay. This is... That's not surprising. All right, so let's do this. <laughs> cool. Okay. Yeah, so it's it's an open embedded build. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's like Yocto or it's, something. I don't think it's, it's really the Debian build. Yeah. The documentation said it was Debian like, so. Do 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 CPU info. Yeah, do do LS CPU or CPU info. Yep, RV64, IMAC, the DCs. Uh, these are U74 MCs, which isn't surprising. There's four of them. I don't know if the. Yep, it's just the four. U74. One day I learn enough to understand the extensions. So I can actually tell them to you because these are all these Off are all basic the top ones. Of my head. So RV sixty four means it's risk five sixty four yeah. bit. Um, I means integer support. Mm -hmm. M means um, mm -hmm. what does that mean? Uh, multiplication. MMU and no, PU multiplication. Okay. Uh, I is integer. M is multiplication. A is atomic. F is floating point. Mm -hmm. D is double precision mm -hmm. floating point. And C is compressed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Compressed, like everybody implements it. It's it's more important in microcontrollers and during the boot process than it is any other time. But the whole point of compressed is that you can basically, instead of using a full 32 bits for the uh, instructions, you can smush everything down into 16 mm -hmm. and basically dramatically improve the uh, instructions per clock cycle of moving through the system because you don't have to read as much out of memory. Yep. Yeah. Uh, um, does this 5 have hardware dividers? Yes. Uh, M gives okay. you division as well. I'm guessing if I, if I those cost... In fact, here. Uh, I have an idea. Oh, dear. Uh... Great, Epiphany. Let's. How bad is Epiphany? Or more accurately, how bad is Epiphany? At... It's okay. It's still GTK web. Yeah. It's GTK three three webkit. Um, it won't be too bad. 
Well, I, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm, what I was gonna say is, how bad is Epiphany at rendering the? Here, let me move this over. At rendering Linux Foundation WordPress sites. <laughs> <laughs> We, we can try WebGL demos as well, just to see the GPU going. Oh, I, maybe. Uh, I, well, actually, so, so we have another hour. Um, actually, we don't. We are actually at our two hours now that I think about it, but that's fine. Um, yeah. So next steps for me, just so that we can talk about that. We did, we did start a few minutes late, so I'm not, I'm not too worried. Mm -hmm. And it's not like either of us need to immediately run away. Um, mm -hmm. Is this trying to go to the website or not i can't tell. <laughs> oh there it goes um so next step for me is to get a better bootloader on here uh either building something with uboot or edk2 um there is a high five unleashed version of edk2 and i do not know if it will work on the unmatched so that will be fun to figure out but if that works then i'm planning on putting a plethora of operating systems on the nvme card um i specifically want mm -hmm. Debian, Fedora, FreeBSD, Haiku. Um, I don't know what else. Ed, Ed, I think, was saying the other day, as we were communicating on the, the bird site, um, that he has Arch. Um, I might try that. I don't know how good or bad the RISC-5 64 port of Arch is. Um, I've used the Debian and the Fedora ports before, so not that's not such a big deal. And there's plenty of space on the, the SSD. It's, it's 500 gig. And... Mm -hmm. Uh, eventually, uh, if I actually want to do like any like serious compiling or anything, that is totally going to happen on an NFS mount from something with a tremendous amount of drive space. I don't need to do anything fancy here. Um, I can get the NZXT stuff plugged in um, and start making the fans do what they're supposed to, although I'm excited to report that both fans are currently spinning, so that's a bonus. Um, wow, this web browser is slow. Uh, I can share, although my video quality might not be the best. No, it's okay. I, I, I here, I, I have a, I have a way of sharing the web browser as well. So let me, let me go pull up some stuff. Uh, um, yeah. We wanted to do everything native, but but you know, <laughs> whatever. Um, Things are silly. Specs. Okay, cool. Um. Yeah, that'll work. So let me come over here. Do I have Firefox? Yeah, that'll work. I don't want those webcams though. So give me one second. Push some buttons. Add some things. Uh, Black Magic. Yeah. I need to stop slouching. I can't be seen on the camera. Um, that's fine. And then I can add. You? Move you down. Cool. And now we can both. I actually want you on top. Excellent. All right. So here's the um, Risk Five specs. Um, open it in Firefox, please. This should give me what I want. Yeah, so here. So typically, like microcontrollers tend to be iMac. Um, and then this will come down here and it will describe to you mm -hmm. all the various things. So um, I know what a lot of these are. We'll, we'll get to it in a second. I should actually like fill it all out here in a second. Like what are the, yeah, here we go. So RB32i is the base integer instruction set. Uh, RB32e is the base integer instruction. So this is a um, uh, I and or E is if yeah. So M is integer multiplication and division. Um, so that was your that was your first question, and then F is single point yeah. floating point, single precision floating point, and D is double precision floating point, and you get all of the instructions. So you get add, multiply, divide, like all of that jazz. Um, there's also a quad precision floating point, which this processor doesn't implement, and that's fine. Um, compressed instructions, which we talked about. 
and then these are up and coming. So B is bit manipulation, J is dynamically translated languages, um, T is transactional memory, P is packed SIMD instructions, V is vector, the thing that I'm most excited about. Um, and then there's uh, these two, which are misaligned atomics and total store ordering. And there's more stuff that's being worked on. Some of the vendors, like I know Andy's has like four or five different extensions that they're working on uh, that are supported in their IP blocks, but they don't necessarily have as part of upstreaming. And I don't know if they're going to upstream them, and that's fine. Um, but yeah. Oh, hey, look, the uh, the page finally loaded. So here, let's, let's transition back. Uh, it wants me to prove that I'm not a robot. I don't know why I have to prove that I'm not a robot, but I, there we go, much better. Um, so yeah, um, it's the the stuttering is the web browser. It is not the capture because you can see the mouse moves nice and, and smoothly, but the <laughs> the web page scrolling not so much. Yeah. Um, I anticipate run, run top. Let's see how much CPU. It oh yeah, that, absolutely. Uh, I anticipate wrong keyboard again. A lot one on one core probably. Uh, I anticipate that this will be better once it's on, uh, once I have a slightly better operating system, because I'm willing to bet that all of this is, like, poorly compiled. So, yeah, WebKit's chewing up an entire core. KWorker is chewing up an entire core, which is highly entertaining, at least to me. Uh, uh, can you press 1? Can I press 1? Sure. Yeah, it's a little busy. On one core, exactly as you expected. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's funny because like I was, um, because of the Steam Proton thing, I've been playing a lot of older games that I've missed on quite a bit. Um, I was playing uh, not super old but old enough version of Assassin's Creed, and it's like because DXVK is doing all the uh, direct text to Vulcan calls, and it's it's actually running on Vulcan. Yep. All of the graphics pipeline I can see is like symmetrically multi-threaded, and there's just like one core at ninety percent that's actually running the game. <laughs> yeah. So like, By so notice just 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 running IP link list like it's taking so long. That's just because it's all coming off of the SD card. Like it's going to be so much better once it's on yeah. NVMe. Um. So. Yeah. See what we can do. Okay, so Sahaj, you're you're running the show next uh, in two weeks. What is your uh, what is your thing? Because I, I I don't think you've updated the calendar yet, and that's okay. Like I'm not trying to to um, uh, make you feel bad. I was just curious uh, if you if you don't mind telling us, and if you don't know, that's fine too. Um, hopefully, if everything aligns, uh, we'll try to make. A uh, cut down version of something called the quadratic quadrature decoder. Um, uh, the intent is to make a IP in FPGA that um, does RPM calculation uh, from Hall effect sensors at the end of a motor. Oh, cool. And one of the reasons okay. is so that I can keep my CPUs free. Uh, I have found my $5 FPGAs that have completely open source tool chain, so that's sort of what we're using. Nice. Um, if if things don't align, um, then we can do some retro C64 stuff. I have okay. to set things up and uh, call well, Manila, like call like can see on on we, can, that we, can we can try and duplicate yeah. our efforts. The funny, the funny part, part is, uh, uh, if, 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 if we, we do want to go down, down that road, we have the, uh, we have the joy of... Uh, uh, whatever, whatever software, software you're working on, on the, the, it's, it's going to be, be so tiny, tiny that, that if we wind, wind up transferring it across, across the internet, internet while you're working, working on it, um, we, can we can do that. that. <laughs> and try it on multiple computers because yes. it's coming over a fun computer is really like 300k! Um, <laughs> so, so cool. cool. Alright. <laughs> um, Yay. A joy, joy hanging out with you as always. Um, Thanks, Thanks to everybody, everybody who showed, showed up in chat. chat. Uh, uh, we, we are working, working on improving, improving so, so please feel free to uh, send us messages. Uh, you can, can tweet, tweet at us. Uh, we, we are, are at uh, uh, Benchfreak Bench on, on Twitter. Twitter. 
Uh, you, can you can find links, links to all of our stuff at adventurefreak.link, B-E-N-C-H-F-R-E-Q.L-I-N-K. And otherwise, everyone have a great week and... A great two weeks. And uh, look forward to hearing, hearing from you all. We'll try and post some stuff up on uh, uh, YouTube here in the next week or so. And uh, see you all later. later.